got the roll, yeah. roll squared away. Uh, you have in your in front of you the uh, summary of the meeting, January 4. What's your pleasure? Move to be approved as written. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minute stand is approved. Moving to reports. Uh, I started last night making some notes for this morning and uh, had more energy than I guess. I had to have a fairly extensive list. Uh, Morristown Landing, the community center, uh, construction moving along very well. I went by yesterday. The foundations are going in. All the work underground is progressing nicely, so we're getting the uh, utilities to the facility. Uh, the pool has been dug out. We're still on track for uh, opening the doors next summer. It's an exciting project and, and really looking good. Um, on West AJ, between Crescent Center and Morris Drive, our locally managed state project is finally underway. I know that uh, we've been talking about it for a very long time, but uh, we are finally mobilized and working. Uh, there will be an upgraded signal at Economy. There'll be sidewalks, drainage, and, and resurfacing. That project is scheduled to be completed by October. The uh, state's work on the Merchant Green Connector to Exit 4, the uh, exit from the school heading back into town, the improvements were done over spring break. Uh, I rode that yesterday as well, and I think it will be an improvement. Uh, there are some minor things to be done, but that project, uh, that road should be declassified as a construction site soon, and the speed limit then will be raised as it will no longer be a construction site. While we're talking about Merchants Green, the, uh, the regional planning people have a committee to oversee development along that corridor, and they will be meeting this week <coughs> on Thursday to talk about some of the key developments that are happening there, the big one being the proposed development by Covenant there at, uh, at Veterans and Merchants Green. Uh, we've got some other important planning tools going on in the region. There's a, a corridor study for West AJ, that's from the county line in Jefferson County, all the way back to Morris. The TDOT is funding a, a, a study to look at uh, what needs to be done there to improve flow and improve safety. Uh, we should begin to see some preliminary reports on that this month through the regional uh, transportation <coughs> planning groups. Uh, that lays a foundation for future requests for funding from the state. Hopefully that will be forthcoming. The city's also been funded for a study for the Cumberland Buffalo Trail Corridor. That's one that's an important entrance to enter our community that needs some, uh, some improvements. At the very least, we hope to be able to justify a traffic signal coordination to make traffic flow better, but other enhancements will be considered as well. So. Uh, Again, that's a foundation to ask for future funding once we get the planning documents in place. We've got uh, a number of um, stormwater projects that are underway. It's the, the time to get construction projects moving. Fulton Hill Park at the former site of Morristown College, a drainage improvement there along the retaining wall on Cumberland is under construction now, uh, cutting that slope back so we can uh, remove the retaining wall and improve the appearance and uh, some maintenance problems on Fulton Hill Park. The drainage project at Cumberland and the railroad is moving very slow. Working with the railroad tends to be that way, but they are moving now. If you look into the uh, parking lot behind the downtown green, you'll see that they are working back toward Cumberland and the, uh, the railroad crossing. So that project is finally moving as again slowly. We have a project out here on West Main. Uh, we are again waiting on railroad since it is along the railroad for their uh, approval of our plans. We expect to be able to work on that this summer. We've got several other smaller stormwater projects in Wayne Hanser Park, East Croxdale, and Bright's Pike Bridge. All those will be under construction this summer. At the regional airport, We've got a new set of three commercial hangars under construction uh, that is being done by a private developer who will occupy one and lease out the other two. It is a ground lease from the airport commission. And we are looking at and will be meeting this week on uh, 
looking at security upgrades for the airport. We've had a couple of incidents where we uh, need to make sure we can better control the perimeter of our airport. And then finally, downtown, the 1907 Brewery is doing a great job in bringing new life to Main Street. A lot of activity, a lot of energy going on down there. I think that combined with the chamber taking over the uh, operation of the Main Street program, the farmer's market, the downtown green, all those things it looks uh, very promising for downtown. We're excited about where it's going to go, and I think that uh, you're going to see a resurgence of downtown Morristown. So that's my report for today. I uh, don't see Bill here. I don't know if anyone wants to talk about the county, but Marshall, talk to us about the chamber. All right, so like Tony said, we've taken over some of the downtown functions, and Heather Blackman Brooks is now on staff. And there'll be a meet and greet for her downtown, I think, this week. Um, so she's already been out walking downtown, meeting with city staff, um, kind of getting the lay of the land. Her background is in Main Streets and certifications, so she has a background there. It's just mainly learning about our community and kind of what makes us tick. So there's some excitement there. Um, we're also working on the Craft Beer Festival, which is one of the Chamber's big events for the year. Um, so that event will be at the end of September, so I think September 25th or 26th, last Saturday. That is the Tennessee Florida game. Um, and I remind everybody we've won once in 17 years now. Um, so feel free to come and probably watch another loss. You can wallow away your sorrows in town instead of having to make that drive and traffic home. What a bad team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get people at my festival. There's enough go to the games. Um, our festival, you know, it is called a craft beer festival. It is family friendly, dog friendly. Last year we had a kid zone. We'll have that again with bounce houses, um, face painting, all those fun things. We'll probably have a um, cornhole tournament, lots of food trucks. And we want it to be kind of a fun event for the community. Um, if you all remember, the reason we originally did this festival was to recruit a brewery, you know, for downtown quality of life things. So it actually happened, the brewery bought the building right before the festival, so we let them participate with us the first year. You can already see the, the activity downtown later at night, which we like, the more good things we have going on downtown late, uh, that keeps the bad things out, so that's good. Um, for us, I think last time I reported that master plan for the park was in process industrially. That is now completed. Um, we now have some different layouts and designs in the park. Um, based on some of the contour mapping and the water mapping that we now have. Um, so that's actually helped us in a way. We've shown some bigger buildings potentially on those sites than we had before, so that's nice. Um, and then, was it last, Friday before last, Diana Harshbarger was here meeting with some industries. And same things we hear often, you know, as long as the government incentivizes people not to go to work, they won't work. Um, as long as we continue to extend the employment <coughs> benefits and pay people more to stay at home than to work, they won't work. And the industries were also very clear housing, you know, was still a need, which we understand and we're working on that. Seeing some impact, we're ready to get some of those doors open. Um, but what they kind of told her were things that we already knew. Um, but I think based on the political nature of Washington right now, there's not a lot, unfortunately, our reps can do about it. But um, that's where they were as well. So um, our industries are growing. You know, things are going really well. I think we've announced right around eight expansions, 775 jobs, and $450 million investment going into 2021. So things are doing pretty well. Um, we will see a few closures this year, which we kind of knew about. The GE facility will finally wind down. They were bought by ABB a couple years ago. ABB is closing those facilities in the U.S. and moving all those to Mexico. Um, so that's been planned. That facility is getting a lot of visits. Um, and then Lear, um, as you all know, I think is closing mid-year. And they kind of announced that early last year that it would be, we thought it would actually be later this year, but they, I think they, when they <coughs> early 2020, they put kind of a notice out early 2020. And I think everybody forgot about it. But that's a good building. That It's an older building built in the 60s, but they've maintained it well. So uh, for us, if we can get good companies in here that will pay a little better, and that's what we're excited about is redeveloping some of these older properties as well. So 
we're hopeful with you know the vaccines rolling out, we'll start getting some more people on airplanes and visiting a little bit. People have been a little wary about getting out, and then some of the foreign countries. Um, essentially, if you go over there and they come here, you know, it's a 14-day quarantine, and it's hard to justify, you know, a 21-day visit to look at a few buildings in the U.S. So we're seeing some of that right now as well. That's all I have for now. Is the well, is the I know the GE plants listed uh, with a little decline. Yeah. What about later? It's not that we know of yet. We've not seen anything. And our local contacts are now gone. So uh, I, we don't have a local contact for Lear. They've moved those people away now. But they moved their HR person that we coordinated with a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack, I have to apologize. I was running the meeting and looked up and saw that, that Bill wasn't here to give a county report, but I failed to recognize that the commission chairman is sitting to my left, and he may be able to brief us on the on what's going on in the county. Uh, if we can, just a minute, and <coughs> you and Mayor, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about your releases in the paper um, about the metro uh, situation and um, uh, again, I realize that somewhat these are out of out of our. We we don't make that decision, but I suppose that that uh, the, the the metro thing, and then the tax thing that we've talked about before. But you know, we we you guys and everybody worked awful hard in, in Morristown for a day or two um, and it, it appears that we've got two major things that could very adversely affect our growth and, and development and one is the metro situation and the other one is the uh, sales tax thing going wherever it is or whatever it is. Um, have we heard anything about the tax thing? I, as far as I can tell, there is no interest or no movement at the state <coughs> legislature to address the sales tax thing at all. I've had no contact whatsoever, had no indication that there's any interest. I think that that's, that's probably not going to happen this session. It's, it's, uh, the municipal league not interested in that at all? I've, I've passed that along to them. They're working more strongly on the metropolitan the statistical area than they are on the sales tax right now, but because uh, that has a shorter time frame. But uh, yes, we will make sure that they're aware. And uh, part of their problem is that they have some rural communities that may be uh, seeing some, some benefits that we're not. But it's primarily benefiting counties in the way they're reallocating the sales tax. The, the sales tax. Um, I noticed that we had a, uh, a meeting um, with, with our new congressman. Uh, was that brought up in the meeting? I wasn't, I didn't know about the meeting. I didn't go, I wasn't here. That was, it was more about industry. They, she invited industries and met with them privately. Um, Jody was in the meeting, but Jody didn't kind of tell you what all they talked about, but it was more for manufacturers. Yeah, it was just an industry round table. She wanted to hear from the local companies um, about their challenges. But in answer to your question, Jack, she is very aware of the concern about the uh, uh, metro statistical area, as are the two senators. Uh, in fact, uh, the efforts to <coughs> voice opposition to that that the city raised uh, resulted in a letter to the Office of Management and Budget that was signed by the congresswoman, both senators, and a couple of other uh, congressmen, I, I think, signed onto that, Fleshman and, and maybe one other whose name I didn't immediately recognize. Uh, 
voicing strong opposition to their adopting that change. Uh, we put in a call last Monday to uh, uh, Congresswoman Harshbarger's office, re-emphasizing, uh, thanking them for the letter, but also uh, emphasizing close attention to that issue. Um, so they're aware of it, they're on it, uh, and currently that's just in the, that proposal is in the stage of where they're accepting public comments, and there's uh, there been a lot of comments that don't change it, and I, I don't know when the actual decision comes, but... Uh, when do you, and, and no, uh, this is, you know, I probably shouldn't say that. Obviously, our congressman is new uh, type of thing, and certainly not. Is, is the Metro decision, what, what, which department of government makes that decision? The Office of Management and Budget. And of course, that's the executive department. That's correct. grand scheme of the state, we have the least argument of anybody. We don't currently qualify under the current rules. If they were to say <coughs> today the rules would be, no, we don't even qualify today. We were grandfathered in the last time. Your Jacksons, your Clevelands have the real push. They're very close to the border and you know, they're 10,000 people away from qualifying um, under the new rules where we would be, gosh, if they change it, we're 70,000 people away from qualifying under the new rules. So there's a bigger challenge for us um, because we're so far away. The requirement today is 50,000 people in your largest city and we're just 30. So we're, we wouldn't even qualify if they were set the rules today. But our argument is grandfather us in. You know, maybe yeah. include that for new cities going forward. they got the bigger push. We're kind of fall, falling at the mercy of the court, kind of what we're doing. Yeah. Falling what? I said we're sort of falling at the mercy of the court and begging <laughs> to be grandfathered in. Because we, as Marshall said, we we're way below what the standard is. The problem is, although they say the rule is not to drive funding, all the other federal agencies use those benchmarks in making funding decisions. It may not be required, but almost certainly those funding decisions, the things you qualify for, will change, and we will be competing with other communities across the state for, for resources and it's going to be hard to have a compelling story and get the same level of funding we've had in the past. Well, that's the reason I, the reason I brought it up. Um, and, and obviously what Mayor, you brought <coughs> out is that, that both senators and congressmen and I presume the congressman for Cleveland and, and uh, Jackson um, or I think Fleshman represents Cleveland and the other one's name I didn't recognize I assume is out of Jackson so. um, and I think we made about as much noise as we can make I, I'm, but you're right, we are handicapped with having a freshman congressperson, a freshman senator, and that makes it a little hard, and they're all on the wrong side of the aisle in terms of party affiliation. So, uh, But there are 142 communities across the nation that are in a similar situation. We hope that, that uh, nationwide there'll be some pushback. But it is a federal bureaucracy, and they tend to move slowly. They tend to have their own agenda. So. We'll see, but it is an important thing for us to monitor. Why, why do they want to do that? I've seen a lot of analysis of the impact on the people who will be leaving. I've seen no justification for making the change other than we haven't changed it in a while. Yeah, that's what I read. There's a, a college economist up from the Northeast that said they haven't studied it. It just hadn't been changed in a while. They thought it was time to change that they're requesting more study, more analysis, but there's been none so far. It's just somebody in an office that was bored and said it's time to change your rules. Well, it 
Tony, as you clearly pointed out, um, we ain't got much for a wagon to ride on. Uh, and uh, um, I really just think that that reading your comments uh, about it plus the sales tax thing could be very bad for the work that you guys have done for a long period of time. Um, and. Uh, Who heads up our government relations committee now? The chamber. For the chamber, Mike. Uh, Mike. Mike. Yep. Um, do you guys think that it would? Uh, uh, obviously. New congressman wanted to meet the industry people for uh, reasons of, of meeting them, which she probably hasn't. Um, is there any possibility of? I presume Haggerty knows the situation, is he not? Yeah, we've contacted, the Chamber's contacted all of them as well. And what's his reaction? Oh, they were all on board with telling them to wait, not to do anything. But us inject a copy of that letter. Yeah. It would be helpful for you to have a copy of that letter that they signed. <clears throat> I'm just trying to think of anything that we might initiate that might help, but according to you, we're on the bottom of the pole anyway. Yeah, I, I, like Gary said, I think we've done and contacted everybody possible right now. It's just kind of waiting and seeing if they can get any action. Well, we are in the public comment period. It would not hurt at all to have the chamber send a comment in for, for officially part of the record. Yeah, yeah I agree. Has somebody talked to Haggerty personally about it? And the reason, the reason I'm skipping the other two is, is uh, I'm not skipping them, but, but um, Haggerty obviously has been involved in economic development uh, as commissioner. And um, And this may be a long assumption. I may be a, a, a uh, he could probably talk about the economics, in my view, probably better than the other two yeah. that you mentioned. Um, um, would it, would it, if you don't think it'd be worthwhile, it's not going to hurt my feelings, but <clears throat> would it, would it be, uh, Haggerty's new. Um, uh, who, who's Haggerty's uh, local <coughs> campaign guy? Uh, Nick Castle. Huh? Nick Castle. I didn't hear you. Nick Castle. Um, I'll, let me get a hold of his secretary, Betsy. She worked for him at the state. She went to Japan with him. She's been with him a while. I'll yell at her. Well, I, it, it, let me let me put it bluntly. It, it, it probably uh, Haggerty uh, needs to do what Harburger was trying to do. Uh, he, he probably needs to meet 
our people. I don't know that you campaign that much here. Um, uh, <coughs> when he was campaigning. Uh, but on, on an economic measure, former ambassador to Japan, etc. and so forth and so on, with the J Japanese industries that we got here. Uh, I suppose if you don't like the idea, he'll just say so. Uh, but uh, would would um, would would it be the worth the effort to maybe have a luncheon uh, with the chamber board and Haggerty and and the whole purpose of this matter would be to discuss this issue if we could get him here. To, our purpose of the deal would be to discuss this issue. His purpose of the deal would be. Maybe to meet the leaders of the community if we can get him here. What do you guys think? Oh, I, I think any time you get <clears throat> someone at the senator level here, you got to have it's got to be compelling reasons for them to come. Usually, it, it, uh, how many votes are here? But uh, he's new, and he and Blackburn are both kind of wear the label of pro Trump, which is either really good or really bad in Washington as far as influence, <coughs> influence goes. Uh, I've communicated with uh, Blackburn's rep, but I, I'm not with Haggerty because I don't know who it is. But, uh, I, and I, I think, didn't mention Blackburn uh, <coughs> because of just exactly what you just said. Uh, I, I just... I'm frustrated with the fact that, that uh, you know, we work so damn hard around here to create jobs and, and accept and so forth and so on. And, and, and it, it's not a thing that you do and it's over with. It's, it's a continuous thing. And uh, either one of these particular issues that I'm talking about in my view, could be uh, a roadblock yeah. uh, as to where we're going in the next 20 years. Uh, um, and uh, <coughs> uh, do you not, do you, you know, do you think if we could get him here, that would be a good idea, Mayor? I'd be surprised if we get him here on that issue. Uh, if we can, that would be anytime something like that would be good with the senator coming and meeting with local industrial and uh, community leaders would be a good idea. I'm betting we probably have more topics than just that on the agenda. Um, I mean, that's, that's a good idea to work the effort. If we could pull it off, I, I'd be pleasantly surprised. I'm not saying don't make the effort. I'm just saying let's don't get our hopes real high. But, uh, if we get Why don't him, you I, talk to your chairman of your committee about it? Yeah, I know my Rather than right. me talking about it, because I do know that that uh, on other issues that we're having to deal with, um, in the newspaper business, that that Haggerty has been my talks to him. Mm -hmm. I think Mike and Deborah have been talking about some of this, about how to get them here and some of the topics. It's, it's being discussed for sure. Well, let, let, let's, let's make the effort to see if we uh, can get him here for uh, Guys, I got a, a lunch on there. So I got a 9 o'clock. Thank you, man. Right. See you. Uh, oh. Because I, I would I really think those two issues, very frankly, are, are uh, could be very detrimental uh, to our economic future, and and uh, and it's, it's in in Morristown and Hamming County, and and the Lakeway area. just don't want us to be put in a place of uh, Sleevel. Um, 
more for that matter. <clears throat> uh, um, some of the other places, like uh, I, I, I think that uh, we've been able to do some things uh, because that we were not on Athens or, or um, one of those type communities. And I, I just think that anything that we can do, and, and in my view, Haggerty would be the selection. Maybe you guys think otherwise, but uh, 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 as the mayor pointed out, our, um, our <coughs> representative uh, in Blackburn, uh, they may even have to get a pass to get the marshal. That, that was the uh, main issues that uh, you get. You have anything else, Tony? No, I think the, but that metropolitan issue will have big implications for everything from economic development to roads to everything we do. I, I think that uh, even the uh, uh, Medicaid allocations, you know, even the hospitals will, will suffer ba based on that. So it, it's a far-reaching thing we need to put some effort into continue to, to raise uh, raise interest. And I think you're right. I think Haggerty's probably best positioned to understand what it means to us. Well, he, you know, he was the, he was the, let's put it this way, he was the commissioner of economic development. He probably hired you. Uh, I was a one or two before him. Huh? I was, I was there when he was there. I was before. I, your favorite hired me, Kismer. Uh, but <laughs> with his background in and economic development ambassador to Japan and all that kind of good stuff, particularly with the German, with the Japanese, that may be that may be the secret to getting him here. Is because when you look at uh, tough torque and Onyx and the Japanese plants that we have here, uh, that that might entice him to want to come and meet the local people and that kind of good stuff. So, yeah, y'all, well, okay. I, 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 I'm, I'm like Tony, I think we ought to make kind of an effort and uh, anything <coughs> that we can do about that. Um, uh, and I'll, obviously we don't have much pull on the political side of the <coughs> issue. I don't know, you got anything that <coughs> jail related or commission related? I We've got a very important up. item related to the jail <laughs> yeah. and justice center. Uh, we'll have a bid opening at 2 p.m. Thursday. So uh, we're very anxious to see how those bids will come in. That's on the jail? Yeah, on the jail and justice center, 2 p.m. Thursday. What's your projections? Any rough guesses? We have been hearing all types of things, uh, uh, you know, with the materials escalating every day. Uh, it's almost scary. Yeah. So I'm afraid to, to, you, to use a figure right now. But some people anticipate it to be high. Others still say there's a possibility it might be low. So we'll... We'll wait and see. Well, it's a good sized project that it should yeah. get interest, but I think that it is steel in particular is going to be a concern. I yeah. think that's it's hard to get right now, and the price is so volatile that it's hard for a guy to stick his neck too far out saying what it's going to be when it gets around to having yeah. to, to build it. Yeah, some of our industrial builders are saying that steel quotes are only as good as the time you're on the phone with the people. To order your product. Yeah, that's what that if you hang up the phone, the steel price they just gave you is not good anymore. So it's odd right now. Well, why is the price? Why is the price of steel being affected, Tony? It, it's there's a lot of demand on a lot of things nationwide, and the fact that uh, COVID disrupted supply. A lot of the plants shut down, so the 
both people trying to build and not enough people making the components. That's even affecting the furniture industry because you can't get uh, foam. I mean, people yeah. were shut down, you see, and if you order a piece of furniture now, don't be surprised. It may take four or five months before you can get it. Huh. I've heard toilet paper is going to get in short supply again due to logistics and supply. Go to Walmart, go so, to Food City, buy your toilet Make paper. a run. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't run out from last year. Got anything else we need to discuss today? Not sure I'm going to pay the motion to adjourn. So moved.